The 1864 National Union National Convention was the United States presidential nominating conventions of the National Union Party, which was a name adopted by the main faction of the Republican Party in a coalition with some war Democrats after some Republicans nominated John Fremont over Lincoln. During the convention, the party officially called for the end of the Civil War, the eradication of slavery, and the adoption of the Emancipation Proclamation. Background The party name was created in May 1864, during the Civil War, ahead of the 1864 presidential election, in which President Abraham Lincoln, then a Republican, was running for re-election. The Radical Republicans, a hard-line faction within Lincoln's own party, held the belief that Lincoln was incompetent and therefore could not be re-elected and had already formed a party called the Radical Democracy Party, for which a few hundred delegates had convened in Cleveland, Ohio, on May 31, 1864. They eventually nominated John C. Fremont, who had been the Republicans' first presidential nominee during the 1856 election. It was hoped that this act would cause someone other than Lincoln to gain the Republican nomination. Republicans loyal to Lincoln created a new name for their party in convention at Baltimore, Maryland, during the first week in June 1864, in order to accommodate the war Democrats who supported the war and wished to separate themselves from the Copperheads. The convention dropped then Vice President Hannibal Hamlin, a radical Republican from the ticket, and chose war Democrat Andrew Johnson as Lincoln's running mate. The National Unionists hoped that the new party and the Lincoln-Johnson ticket would stress the national character of the war. Party platform The party supported a platform of 11 resolutions. Several resolutions were notable as they specified that the cause of the Civil War was slavery, called for slavery's eradication from the Union, called for the complete destruction of the Confederacy, opened military enlistment to freed slaves, adopted the Emancipation Proclamation, and supported an increase in foreign immigration and asylum as just policy. Dennis Francis Murphy, member of the official corps of reporters for the U.S. Senate, transcribed the unveiling of, and response to, the resolutions 1. Resolved, that it is the highest duty of every American citizen to maintain against all their enemies the integrity of the Union and the paramount authority of the Constitution and laws of the United States, and that, laying aside all differences of political opinion, we pledge ourselves, as Union men, animated by a common sentiment and aiming at a common object, to do everything in our power to aid the government in quelling by force of arms the rebellion now raging against its authority, and in bringing to the punishment due to their crimes the rebels and traitors arrayed against it. Prolonged applause 2. Resolved, that we approve the determination of the government of the United States not to compromise with rebels, or to offer them any terms of peace, except such as may be based upon an unconditional surrender of their hostility and a return to their just allegiance to the Constitution and laws of the United States, and that we call upon the government to maintain this position, and to prosecute the war with the utmost possible vigor to the complete suppression of the rebellion, in full reliance upon the self-sacrificing patriotism, the heroic valor and the undying devotion of the American people to their country and its free institutions. Applause 3. Resolved, that as slavery was the cause, and now constitutes the strength, of this rebellion, and as it must be, always and everywhere, hostile to the principles of republican government, justice and the national safety demand its utter and complete extirpation from the soil of the republic applause and that, while we uphold and maintain the acts and proclamations by which the government, in its own defense, has aimed a death blow at this gigantic evil, we are in favor, furthermore, of such an amendment to the Constitution, to be made by the people in conformity with its provisions, as shall terminate and forever prohibit the existence of slavery within the limits or the jurisdiction of the United States. Tremendous applause, the delegates rising and waving their hats. 4. Resolved, that the thanks of the American people are due to the soldiers and sailors of the Army and Navy applause, who have periled their lives in defense of their country and in vindication of the honor of its flag, that the nation owes to them some permanent recognition of their patriotism and their valor, and ample and permanent provision for those of their survivors who have received disabling and honorable wounds in the service of the country, and that the memories of those who have fallen in its defense shall be held in grateful and everlasting remembrance. Loud applause and cheers. Five. 
Resolved, that we approve and applaud the practical wisdom, the unselfish patriotism and the unswerving fidelity to the Constitution and the principles of American liberty, with which Abraham Lincoln has discharged, under circumstances of unparalleled difficulty, the great duties and responsibilities of the presidential office, that we approve and endorse, as demanded by the emergency and essential to the preservation of the nation and as within the provisions of the Constitution, the measures and acts which he has adopted to defend the nation against its open and secret foes that we approve, especially, the proclamation of emancipation, and the employment as Union soldiers of men heretofore held in slavery applause, and that we have full confidence in his determination to carry these and all other constitutional measures, essential to the salvation of the country into full and complete effect. Vociferous applause 6. Resolved, that we deem it essential to the general welfare that harmony should prevail in the national councils, and we regard as worthy of public confidence and official trust those only who cordially endorse the principles proclaimed in these resolutions, and which should characterize the administration of the government. Applause 7. Resolved, that the government owes to all men employed in its armies, without regard to distinction of color, the full protection of the laws of war. Applause and that any violation of these laws, or of the usages of civilized nations in time of war, by the rebels now in arms, should be made the subject of prompt and full redress. Prolonged applause 8. Resolved, that foreign immigration, which in the past has added so much to the wealth, development of resources and increase of power to this nation, the asylum of the oppressed of all nations, should be fostered and encouraged by a liberal and just policy. Applause 9. Resolved that we are in favor of the speedy construction of the railroad to the Pacific coast. Applause 10. Resolved, that the national faith, pledged for the redemption of the public debt, must be kept inviolate, and that for this purpose we recommend economy and rigid responsibility in the public expenditures, and a vigorous and just system of taxation, and that it is the duty of every loyal state to sustain the credit and promote the use of the national currency. Applause 11. Resolved, that we approve the position taken by the government that the people of the United States can never regard with indifference the attempt of any European power to overthrow by force or to supplant by fraud the institutions of any Republican government on the Western continent. Prolonged applause. And that they mill view with extreme jealousy, as menacing to the peace and independence of their own country, the efforts of any such power to obtain new footholds for monarchical governments, sustained by foreign military force, in near proximity to the United States. Long continued applause. Topic: <laughs> Presidential vote. On the first ballot, Missouri delegates cast their 22 votes for General Ulysses S. Grant. The Missourians quickly changed their votes to make Lincoln's renomination unanimous. The vice presidential vote Andrew Johnson, the former senator from and current military governor of Tennessee, was named as Lincoln's running mate. Others who were considered for the position, at one point or another, were former Senator Daniel Dickinson, Major General Benjamin Butler, Major General William Rosecrans, Joseph Holt, and former Treasury Secretary and Senator John Dix. <laughs> Lincoln's acceptance In keeping with the tradition of the time, Lincoln did not attend the convention. On hearing the news of his renomination, he wrote on June 9, 1864, I am very grateful for the renewed confidence which has been accorded to me, both by the Convention and by the National Union League. I am not insensible at all to the personal compliment there is in this, yet I do not allow myself to believe that any but a small portion of it is to be appropriated as a personal compliment. The convention and the nation, I am assured, are alike animated by a higher view of the interests of the country for the present and the great future, and that part one am entitled to appropriate as a compliment is only that part which I may lay hold of as being the opinion of the convention and of the league, that I am not entirely unworthy to be instructed with the place I have occupied for the last three years. I have not permitted myself, gentlemen, to conclude that I am the best man in the country, but I am reminded, in this connection, of a story of an old Dutch farmer, who remarked to a companion once that it was not best to swap horses when crossing streams. See also 
1864 Democratic National Convention 1866 National Union Convention History of the United States Republican Party List of Republican National Conventions United States Presidential Election, 1864